uh, welcome everybody to our um, webinar within the Equal IST Horizon 2020 uh, project. The topic of today is, uh, as you know, enhancing female research careers uh, in ICT and IST. Um, and um, this is part of our uh, project webinar series. Um, our goal with this uh, series of webinars is to um, uh, provide support to our research uh, organizations uh, in our consortium in their implementation of gender equality plans. Uh, so far, we have a topic we have covered um, other two topics. Uh, gender sensitive language was the first webinar and then also we um, explored um, methods and tools to attract girls and high school students to uh, get enrolled to ICT and IST studies. Uh, we have an, an already uh, scheduled webinar uh, on uh, 4th June 2018 uh, on uh, sustainability of gender equality plans. A few words about our project. Um, we uh, designed this project starting uh, by the main uh, challenge of uh, the underrepresentation of women in um, ICT and IST. Uh, which is a problem. A um, uh, lot of studies have uh, explored already this, uh, under, this strong underrepresentation, um, and um, in particular in uh, top positions, um, <coughs> women are particularly underrepresented in, in, in engineering and technology faculties in the EU. Uh, women just uh, represent. Uh, slightly more than 9% uh, of full professors. Uh, so with the Equal IST, um, we, um, we have um, several um, ICT uh, and IST departments uh, that you can see here um, uh, from uh, Liechtenstein, uh, Italy, uh, Germany, Portugal, uh, Ukraine, uh, Lithuania and Finland. Um, and uh, all, the, um, the, all these universities are um, committed to introduce um, sustainable and long-term structural change to promote gender equality uh, in, their, in their organizations. And the main uh, tool uh, that we need to uh, use to, this, uh, to achieve this goal is um, the design and, and implementation of gender equality plans. Uh, so we had um, uh, a thorough analysis of the internal situation at each uh, department and faculty, uh, conducting um, gender audits at each institution. Then we uh, use the participatory uh, method uh, and tool uh, like a crowdsourcing platform to, um, to have a participatory co-design of these plans, gender equality plans. Uh, and now we have uh, finished uh, the first um, implementation phase of the plans, which is going pretty, uh, pretty well. Then we are going to uh, approach the issue of sustainability. One of the crucial uh, areas of interventions that uh, all gender equality plans uh, in Equal IST are focusing on is definitely promoting uh, and sustaining um, careers of uh, female researchers in computer sciences um, um, and um, uh, engineering <coughs> and information system studies. This, uh, here you can find a list of uh, all the tools that are comprised in um, our partners' gender equality plans. So uh, the actions uh, to sustain uh, female researchers' careers really span from um, networking to mentoring and coaching, but also uh, code of conduct, conduct to promote transparency and fair evaluation um, in recruitment procedures, uh, as well as promoting the endorsement of uh, the EURAXIS um, Human Resources Strategy for Researchers Charter. And then there are also some um, further supporting actions, uh, mainly dealing with um, improving work-life balance for, uh, for researchers, both men and women. 
So today, we are really eager to know from um, the experience and good practices put in place by a uh, technical university in Vienna. Um, and therefore, we invited Professor uh, Gerti Kappel, uh, who is our keynote today. Uh, I will soon uh, give the floor uh, to her. As you can uh, see, uh, she is full professor at the Institute of Information Systems Engineering uh, at the Technical University of Vienna, and they are really um, have been working since uh, a lot of uh, years on um, promoting. Um, uh, the, the careers of female researchers and attracting uh, girls to these studies. Uh, we are um, really eager to know from, from um, her experience uh, because several actions, uh, as we understood, were um, undertaken at the university level, uh, but also several specific actions uh, were um, focusing on uh, the um, Institute of Information Systems um, more specifically. So these intersections are really of great interest for us. Um, after, uh, as I said, the, we will have a question and answer session. Uh, I hope that uh, there will be many questions from, from, uh, uh, from our uh, participants. Uh, and then, um, yeah, uh, we will. I, I will. I will really invite you to um, take note of the uh, upcoming um, uh, dates. Uh, tomorrow, we will continue on the same topic of today uh, with Professor Leila Batina from um, Radboud University, and then we have uh, the fourth of June on how to sustain in time and ensure that uh, gender equality plans are. Um, have a long-term uh, impact. So, um, thank you again to Professor uh, Gerti Kappel for uh, accepting our invite, and I will uh, give the floor to, to you. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I guess I share now my, you know, can you see me? Yes. Yes, can you see my slides? Not yet. Uh, Babis, can you please um, uh, allow uh, Gerti to be the presenter? Okay, I just share my slides with you. No, the slides are seen. Yeah. No. So now you, you have the slides and you have my, <laughs> my face. So thank you very much for the introduction and um, also for a kind of uh, giving the intro to your project. Um, I'm not sure if I really can tell you a lot of new things, but interestingly enough, you know, there are a lot of uh, endeavors uh, and, and projects which kind of heavily try to get the women in place. And I guess we do this since 30 years or even more. And it, I'm not sure if it really got less difficult. Yeah? I, Perhaps we have now more opportunities to, to make this kind of projects, but uh, at least there's still a, a long way to go. What I want to share in the next couple of minutes with you is what we have done at the, we call it Faculty of Informatics, as a School of Computer Science at the uh, TU Wien. Uh, Maria, you have specific, specifically mentioned this kind of interlink between what the university is doing and what uh, we at our Faculty of Informatics have been done, and I will also uh, come to this uh, during my during my presentation. Uh, just a minute. Um, so, uh, just a last check. I guess now you see the slide: female support activities selected list. Yeah, and you can hear me all. You know, um, in fact, in um, Austria. Since the late 90s, it was possible to um, build up workshops for um, female pupils in schools for a couple of days per week to uh, get the female students in school interested into the so-called STEM subjects, you know, science, technology, engineering, and maths. And, um, I was, um, at that time, I had a professorship in, uh, in Linz, in Austria, at the, at the Johannes Kepler University of Linz. 
And I was, in fact, building up this kind of workshops. They were called in German, Frauen in the Technik, also Females into Technology. It's, you can even say it's the same acronym. I was building up these fit days uh, since mm, the late 90s in Linz. And we had something like 200 to 300 uh, female students per year. And already at that, in these workshops, and already at that time, the director then asked me what I think, how many more students we will, female students we will have. And my answer was that he is kind of naive, you know. Uh, the whole, our whole society, whole school education is such, is so conservative. And, uh, some workshops will not change the world all of a sudden. Um, I was then able to have a so-called um, female support, higher uh, support program, as so building up a higher uh, education program here at TU Wien, which was the Women's Postgraduate College for Internet Technologies. It was a pro project for five years with the aim that female, uh, young female researchers should do their PhD. We had eight positions in this whole area, when we called it internet technologies, but it was in general the whole area of ICT. The only um, restriction was that female students have to do their PhD. Uh, this was kind of one column of the project. We were building up a second column where we really tried to, we called them supportive measures through, in the, through the whole career of the students. So we were uh, enlarging, uh, as we were going into schools and providing workshops for 13 to 15 year old and for 16 to 18 year old, for example, um, demantling a PC and put it together again and installing operating systems and having little programming workshops. And again, we had something like two to three hundred female students per, you know, summer, holiday, during the summer holidays we did this. And they were all very interested, but again, it was only, you know, it was a little bit, it was, it had no really sustainability, so whatever. And the third column, but the experience was that they are really interested. So, you know, it's if we I mean, to immediately draw here some conclusion, if we would be able to change the curriculum in schools yeah, and provide this as part of that normal curriculum, I'm pretty sure we would have more uh, female students in the, in the STEM subject. And the third column was that we have, were uh, establishing a so-called a colloquium series, a lecture series, where the, just the goal was to have really um, high-end, famous uh, scientists, politicians, uh, industry persons, who also have kind of, a, um, who also have something to say about uh, um, female support or who, who think this is important. Yeah. And at that time, as we had, for example, Erich Gamma né, from the Gang of Four, from the um, um, Design Patterns book, and we had David Harrell, uh, the logician, and we had uh, Jim Gray, the uh, Turing awardee. So we really had, but I were only mentioning the uh, males, but we also had Monica Hensinger, at that time she was um, research head of Google. Uh, and so we had really very good people, and this helped us to really also spread the idea of this um, um, of this program and of, of the necessity of such a program. But and as you also have, I think you talked about this uh, in your slides about sustainability. The program lasted for five years until end of 2007. And really the first January of 2008, nobody was interested in it anymore because there was no money to do it. There was then a kind of a second um, round of this project where we, it was then spread not all, of, all over the TUV. So it was then not only um, PhD programs for computer scientists, but for all other technical and engineering uh, 
science subjects. But it, this had not the, the drive of the, of the first uh, bit. Uh, the whole TUV is doing this fit days, so female uh, uh, pupils uh, into technology uh, ever since, so since the late 90s. Uh, every uh, year at the end of January, so, uh, um, shortly before the uh, winter term break, we have something like two to three hundred uh, female students uh, interested in all, all kinds of, of, of this, uh, STEM subjects. Huh? Um, what, even I'm a little bit bumping uh, um, between the, the, here on the slide, what we try as well, to really build up is along this line of attract female students, try to keep them, to kind of uh, lower the dropout rate and try to promote them. And what we also uh, have realized what is uh, very necessary is to uh, not only promote the female researchers, but but to really sensitize also all the other uh, members of the faculty, because there are still members, more men, but to a certain extent also uh, women, as a both men and women, who are not so sure if this is the right way to go to support women. Um, and along this line of attracting, what I really, what we have realized over the last years and what we have uh, intensified in the last two years is to uh, get uh, female students who haven't done a technically oriented uh, secondary school to get them attracted to computer science or to an uh, ICT subject. And the main reason is the following, at least in Austria, we have a very um, diversified secondary school system. We have secondary schools where you hear a lot of uh, technical stuff, and we have other uh, secondary schools where you hear about you know, art and cooking and languages and whatsoever, but you never have any technical subject, which doesn't mean that you are not, that you, that you wouldn't have the talent uh, or the, the, even the, you wouldn't be interested in some um, a, a technical study, but kind of nobody really has supported you so far. So uh, what we have built up, and I think this is the most important measure to, to get female students, which are not already in their secondary education, um, kind of um, written, ha have been involved with technical subject, uh, to get them interested. And what we have built up is these two things. We have built up an e-learning course, Introduction to Programming with Processing. Uh, just a little technical uh, detail, processing is a kind of preprocessor to Java. And it's, it's, not, it's easier to get into your first running program and because it very much supports um, graphical uh, output. It's very easy to, to draw um, a geometric um, forms like, uh, you know, circles and, 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 and rectangles and, and so on. And it's easy to, to build more complex um, graphical um, I'd say, uh, output based on the uh, kind of atomic um, um, uh, features. So uh, we have established this programming course and mm -hmm. As a, this e-learning course, I have to say it's in German because all our bachelor's uh, uh, program is in German. And the nice thing is, is that um, we um, um, promote it also in schools and tell the, both the teacher and the pupils, if you are interested in doing an ICT study and you have no idea about programming, and it's also not necessary to have an idea, I have to say that. Uh, but nevertheless, it might be interesting to have a look already beforehand. Yeah? And as this is one thing, you, I have put here also the, the link. So it is in the internet, this platform, eMOX. This is a kind of, you know, in, in, 
in German dialect, this means I like it. Yeah? So this, they have played with the words here. Uh, this is an, um, a MOOC platform developed by the TU Graz, uh, another huge technical university in, in, in Austria. And it is in the internet. Everybody can use it, you know, at, from the globe. And the second measure we have built up is this bridging course, Introduction to Programming. And this is really an on-site course two, two, two weeks before the winter term, the first semester starts. And it is, again, from female students. And meanwhile, also a lot of male students say, oh, I have also not learned uh, programming. So in fact, we have built up also now, or we are offering also now one for male students, but we really deliberately offer them uh, mono, in a mono-educated -educa fashion. That means we have an own course for female students and an own one for male students. Because our experience so far is that it is necessary to give them confidence. And they feel kind of or it's easier to get the confidence when they kind of they are within in, in their own uh, cohort, in their own group. And the nice thing about the switching courses, first, they get confidence that they are also able to learn programming. And second, as a kind of a side effect, they also network. You know, and one problem is when you enter the university and you, you know nobody that you kind of feel alone. You, you get the feeling everybody knows all the other people and all already know how the, the things are going, but you are the only one who, who has no idea. And this is also kind of this, this uh, enlarges the, the threat that you drop out. And therefore, also we, um, with this preaching course, you already get to know your, um, your peers before the uh, kind of the, the real curriculum starts and you can, um, uh, you can then uh, start together. Uh, I should mention, you know, because the, what, uh, um, what we try to resolve with this bridging course and with the MOOC is the following situation we have experienced over the last 10 to 15 years, and it got worse, is although we don't uh, expect that um, our freshmen and fresh women uh, know any, uh, have any programming skills, yeah? we don't expect it. But nevertheless, you can imagine when you sit, we have something like 600 um, beginners every year. When you sit in the you know, main lecture hall and left to you, there is a guy who said, ah, easy, I know everything. And right to you, there is perhaps a guy who, again, thinks he knows everything. Independent if you are male or female, if you don't know programming, you might feel lost. And it, it's mainly kind of, it's, it's not really your cognitive uh, abilities, but it's mainly this emotional feeling which then perhaps puts you down and um, makes you to drop out. So this bridging course, which is really a mono-educated bridging course, and the MOOC, uh, we think help us, and it's not only thinking and believing, we have the first um, qualitative and also quantitative numbers, which really, which are really encouraging in the sense that, for example, uh, we have now the bridging course of, for two years, and when we look at the uh, um, at, at the exams which have been taken by the female and by the male students or by the female students who have done the bridging course, they are they have done more positive exams and they have gotten better grades than the other, their colleagues, their peers, who haven't done the bridging course. Um, so this is really kind of the, the little success stories I really wanted to share with you. Huh? Uh, we have online mentoring for female students as for beginners. This means before they start, they can ask questions uh, and get informed. Um, this works to a certain extent, but this doesn't really uh, provide a lot of um, it, 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 it helps perhaps on an individual basis, but it, it doesn't help on the kind of on the, the whole cohort, really. We have mentoring for master students, for PhD students, but these are also um, 
not really huge support measures. So concerning the attracting, it's really the bridging course and the MOOC which helps us uh, the most, I think. Th there is another point which I will come to, uh, concerning attracting, which I will come to it on a later slide, which is in general building up a proactive interface to uh, uh, schools we have, which we haven't started yet. This is something which we will start in the uh, coming uh, year. Concerning this second part, concerning this keeping, mm -hmm. uh, what we have, I mean, this is really, you know, where you can say you have this mentoring, but what we really have tried over the last two years is also really change the curriculum of the first year. As I was saying, we have seen that programming was really a, a, a you know, where we, a stone that most of them stumbled over it. So the programming course, we uh, divided it into two courses in a kind of programming course one and two. And the programming course one is really mainly for people who have no idea about programming next to that, that they have done the bridging course and the MOOC. And only in programming two, it gets then into an advanced and in a, in a, into a faster pace. We have done this now, as we are now in the second semester, so we are really, we have the first cohort who went through it, and the feedback is really very, very good. Again, this is an, a measure which is not only good for female, but of course also for male who don't know how to program, but it's mainly the females who didn't have this, uh, or who didn't have this skill, or who do not have this skill coming from school. Yeah. What we also do to kind of um, attract uh, female students, especially, or to to um, yeah attract them during the master study, we have built up something like I would call the dean's list, the dean's list of exceptional good female students. And we have uh, uh, established a scholarship um, supported by Siemens, Siemens Austria, where uh, similar to what you would say, uh, like with the bachelor with honor program, but in, a, in a smaller scale, uh, and it is on the master level, as a master students, master female students, uh, now I have to correct myself, it's also for bachelor female students. Uh, bachelor and master female students who have um, exceptional good grades, as a higher than 1.5 and 1.0 would be the best. The best, you know, we have a a, a grade sc um, scale from one to five. Five is not passed, and one is passed with everything with all distinctions. So better than 1.5, they will get um, a special kind of, um, there will be uh, a special ceremony and they will also get uh, some uh, money to spend for their study and they will be offered uh, a, a, a called research assistant, but you know, at the master level, kind of um, a position for, for, for two hours a week for one year to work with, um, uh, with one of our research departments. Uh, we call them, in German, they are called Studienassistent. If I make a literal translation, it's like a teaching assistant, but it's not really for teaching, but really for getting them into, getting them interested into research topics and perhaps um, already work in some research projects at, at, um, re at um, research divisions. Uh, and perhaps stay and make a PhD continue uh, uh, their, their career at the university. Yeah. Um, in this realm, we have kind of intensified this kind of um, student assistant as this kind of assistant positions for master students, for female master students. So every year, in addition to this um, exceptional good, female students, we offer three positions for now really only master female students to work into pro in to get, uh, for example, in practicals or uh, as part of their master thesis, 
together uh, with some research groups on some specific um, research topics. Uh, you know, and the third kind of phase, yeah, you have to attract them, then you have to keep them, and then you should promote them. And promotion is, you know, at the pre doc, but even more on the postdoc level and further on. Um, concerning promotion at this level, we have uh, built, uh, or we have established a little scholarship. If you have, um, if you have a multi-author paper and you have a female co-author, if the female co-author goes to the conference to present the paper, she gets um, a traveling, as a financial traveling support from the uh, from dean's office. It's again to promote that you know quite often as to promote females to be shown to get them in front of the curtain to uh, um, kind of enlarge their confidence also in their own work. Uh, one measure I have, which is between kind of keeping and promoting, which I have forgotten to mention is that, uh, we, you know, normally is we only have money to go to a conference if you also have a paper there. But uh, quite often, if you have very good master students, and they are not sure if they should uh, continue uh, this um, scientific career, it might be worthwhile to take them to a conference so they see how, you know, what is the spirit of discussing ideas, discussing results, getting feedback without having any um, a conference paper. And uh, from the team's office, we also support uh, uh, this possibility for a couple of female master students that they are taken by their supervisor Mainly, it's mainly than their supervisors uh, to to join them uh, to go to a conference to really get I would say this spirit of networking and uh, international uh, relationships. Yeah, and last but not least, concerning the, concerning the sensitizing, as I was saying, um, you know. It's not that all colleagues think that this is the right way to go to use your time and money to support females. We also, um, also the TU Wien now, the TU Wien has established um, uh, workshops for or on, on gender mainstreaming, gender budgeting, and all uh, related uh, topics. And we more or less urge our research groups that uh, per year at least one male member of a research group of a research group should attend uh, one of these um, gender workshops to you know to get to know that these are important topics which we as a university and as a um, faculty of informatics also have to cope with. So these are the mainly the, um, the, the, the most I think the most important measures we have done in the past and we are continuing doing. I was just you know when I, I switched to uh, the preaching and to the MOOC course, uh, I, there are two measures in the realm of promoting which I have I haven't mentioned so far. Uh, there's one you can say a little thing, but uh, what we have built up, blue stands, you know, the color stands for IBM. Uh, IBM Austria approached us that, they, of course, they would also like to have more uh, female uh, IT professionals. And they wanted, or they approached us that we build up some kind of um, networking event where uh, female IT professionals from IBM with students from our university, as a female students from our university, need to, to to discuss several topics, get to know each other, and also to provide some kind of mentoring for the female students from the IT, female IT professionals. And this takes place something like two times a year. We have different. Um, different uh, presentations like about uh, 
you know, career development and work-life balance. And we also had a presentation about Watson and Watson was new and so on. And this is always a very interesting, uh, very um, with intense discussions. But I have to say, it's. I thought that more students would take the more female students would take this opportunity, but this is not the case. Yeah? I think it's one thing also is that you know when, and I will come to this on the next slide. When the female students, uh, when you when you approach female students with this this with this specific um, uh, kind of measures, they really have to see the benefit. And quite often they don't see, or at least not at the first place, see the benefit of these uh, measures. And last but not least, you see here we have this tenure track postdoc position for female scientists. Uh, we, uh, I guess, like in a lot of other places in continental Europe, we are heavily discussing and changing our career, um, career okay, development in the direction of an um, assistant associate full professor tenure trick uh, system. We are at the beginning, I have to say, uh, and um, we are some, some announcing one um, tenure track assistance, prof so assistance professorship with tenure track uh, possibility one per year and get 50 to 100 applications. Yeah? Uh, but we had the possibility to announce one now for, uh, all, only for female scientists. Yeah? And we announced this position uh, in November. We had 55 um, applications of really, really uh, high-end female scientists. And in fact, it was uh, just last week that um, Kind of the shortlist was built, and uh, the first, um, so the, the, the female scientist, which was uh, put on the first uh, position uh, um, with, with, with this female scientist, there are now negotiations. Eh? Um, also, in, in this regard, you know, there are sometimes there are kind of little also, uh, voices. Uh, 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 People saying, is this necessary? And uh, this wouldn't, this is not equal. This doesn't, uh, is not um, following the constitution because it would mean that you, you um, kind of support one group of people more than the other. And uh, we have all these things legally checked. And of course, in the sense of affirmative actions, as long as there is no kind of equal situation between um, different group of groups of people, you are allowed to take this uh, kind of support measures to, to come into this equal uh, situation. This about um, our different activities, but rounding up, it's really the most important thing is to get the female students from the schools. And I have to say, um, I am now in this technical kind of um, environment, teaching environment, more than 30 years. And I also have to say that almost nothing has been changed. When I started my study in 1979, we were something like 15% students, female students in ICT. And we have the same amount of female students nowadays. Eh? Sometimes they are 18, 90 percent, then again they are 15, 16 percent. So there is not really a lot of change. And now you might say, why? When I'm talking about all these measures, what we really have learned is, and I'm, I'm totally convinced about that, yeah? we have in fact three competitors, I always say. We have a conservative society, as a conservative culture, conservative schools and still conservative homes. This, but of course there are exceptions and so on, but in general, as I look at least in Austria, or in, in middle Europe, Austria and Germany, we have very conservative school systems still. Yeah? And we are mainly, uh, the females are hiding for language and art oriented schools. 
because nobody not they don't not because they don't like uh, technical stuff, but nobody has told them that this is also interesting. So therefore, I'm really convinced we have to go into the schools. We have to build up the interface to the schools. Another, for me, very important point is really that we, when we talk to the women, we really have to find the right tone. What I have learned is, you can say, it's, of course, it's clear that women are not in need of support, but they are worthy of support. But we have to tell this to women. Most women say, don't um, approach me concerning any support measures. I'm not handicapped. I don't want your uh, support measures. And just to give you a little bit of evidence uh, about that, we had um, an opinion poll among our female computer science students um, three years ago. Yeah? And there were 27% in favor of female support activities. But it means 73% were against the female support activities because they say, I don't need it. I'm not different to my male colleagues. So just let me alone. And they don't know that they are kind of handicapped, socially handicapped in their, you know, in their education, in their in the possibilities they have got in in the way they are approached by the teachers. But this is really, I think it's an important and it's a delicate kind of subject in the sense that we can offer female support measures as much as we like or as many as we like if we don't reach our, you know, our target group. Um, what, therefore, what we have learned also is don't stick, you know, into and this is when you are doing this project, this is great, you are already on the right path, yeah? But uh, it's very important to reach out, to talk to the others, to network, yeah? As a think global, think big is really learn from the others, yeah? As a, a very, very good example is the Carnegie Mellon University. And in fact, now the third this week, I had dinner with Lenore Bloom yesterday evening. It's the third time that we have Lenore Bloom here. It was the first time in 2004 within our week program. We had her here last year, where we kind of discussed the change of our curriculum, our first year curriculum, and we have it. Uh, we have her here uh, together with her husband during what. Uh, Ewadi, Manuel Bloom, also this. It's very important that when you want to change something yeah, and you go to the rector, and it, this was the situation with Lenore Bloom, I really have to uh, explain you shortly. When she was here the first time, in, as I said, in 2004, and we had this discussion concerning this, you know, so called double body problem. That means when you hire one person, uh, most probably the partner, uh, independent if it's male or female is also in a position needs also some position or need needs some workplace and if you are not supportive that also the partner gets a position it most probably you will also leave uh, I will not leave, uh, lose you will also lose uh, the person you would like to uh, to hire in the first place and uh, we had a discussion with our responsible vice rector at that time and he was saying no and I'm not in front of and it, it, I don't have to care about the family and the family situation and so on and Lenore Bloom was just looking at him and saying okay you don't have to be fond of you don't have to do it but then you you won't get the right person you will lose all to your competitors and all of a sudden he started writing down her words and her advice so what I have learned is, if you want to change something, you have to get the, you know, the stars, yeah, the really the big guys, to tell your, um, your deans, your rectors, what they have to do, because most probably your words will not be listened to in this in the in the same way as when there some stars are coming. Um, you know, and, and, and 
what I already mentioned with this um, um, interface to schools, bring female students in and retain, retain them. As so really this, we, we have to, I'm pretty sure at least we here, Technical University Department or School of Computer Science or Faculty of Informatics, we have to build up the interface to schools. And this is again, not something new. Uh, we have a very, we have a very famous um, microbiology department in in Vienna, yeah? and the guy who leads this department, or I should say, has led it because now he's got an even better position in Vancouver in, in Canada. But the first thing what he has built up a so-called open science lab, and I think there is no pupil, no student in Vienna who. Uh, hasn't been there once with his or her biology uh, teacher. And I think the same we have to do with computer science. Yeah? It, this is not only now for females, it's also for the male stu uh, pupils, but especially for the females to show them uh, what can be done. And what we will uh, build up, in fact, we are in the process, uh, process of building up and we will um, open it the um, first time this winter term. We will make a permanent um, exhibition to the subject computational thinking. Huh? Because you also know this uh, situation on the one hand, okay, we all we know that pro we have to program to understand further on, but we know that you know computer science is more than programming. And especially to attract females, it's important to tell them what is uh, computational thinking. What does it mean uh, to think in a structural way? to develop algorithms, to uh, show uh, social responsibility and so on. And uh, as I said, we are in the currently uh, building up, this is an exhibition which has been developed at the TU Darmstadt, as in Germany, near uh, Frankfurt am Main. Darmstadt, there is Darmstadt and the TU, as the Technical University Darmstadt, is, has really a very, very good computer science department and they have a very good Department uh, Didactics for Computer Science. And the head there is Jens, Jens Gallenbacher. And he has developed, I'm not sure if it's also in English, but this is in German. He has developed a very good book called, um, I'm looking, uh, the, the German title is Abenteuer Informatik, which means Abenteuer is, uh, and you are excited about something, yeah? Excitement Computer Science. And he has developed also this exhibition, which we, which we are building up. Okay. Uh, next to it, we need role models. We need role models on all levels of our career. And this is one reason also why we have established, the, established this specific um, um, assi teaching assistance, research assistance at the master student level, also to show yeah, that we have very good female students and by showing them, perhaps also attracting uh, more. Yeah? But we need this on all level. Worthy of support, I already mentioned the, the Dean's List and inviting master students to conferences. And also, as you were saying, the most important thing is sustainability. If whatever program you have, if it stops in X years, in X plus one years, nobody's taking care anymore. And for the sustainability, of course, you need resources. Um, how have we built up what I have uh, told you so far? As it is, all this WIT program was supported by the Austrian government. Um, over the last almost now three years, I am a member in the Dean's team, and we got special support, so financial support from our rectorate. Uh, perhaps. Also, our rector is female. I'm not, perhaps not only because of this, but she is very, she, as she is very fond of supporting female students in the STEM subjects. And uh, we have got resources for four years to build up what we have done so far. And um, we are looking now for further. Um, uh, sponsorship and for further scholarships and to get also uh, local as a national project money. But we are also kind of, 
also we are in a good mood that we will get further support by our uh, rectorate. And last but not least, you know, concerning promotion, when you are, when you have a position or when you are heading for a position, normally you are in an age where you want to get children. And thanks, whatever, God or whoever you want to thank, females are still getting the children. Yeah? And this is, I think this is the right way to go. But what you really need, you need some children support. Yeah? And um, we also have, I was mentioning, we have a vice rector for human resources and gender and the department for gender fair and the working group on equality issues. But the most important thing, we have a kindergarten at TUV. Again, this is not only for female, this is of course also for all our male colleagues. Yeah? But still, it's mainly the females who say, oh, I can't attend a meeting at 5 p.m. because I have to fetch my children. But also the males are saying it anymore. And I want to close with the last slide. We had um, for, for our, our newly uh, appointed uh, professors uh, as a kind of introduction to the TUV and to the uh, Faculty of Informatics, we had a panel on the future of computing last November at 5 p.m. And as you see here, Agatha, Ivona, Laura, Matteo, Muhammad, there are three out of five women. And we had, uh, we also offered some uh, children, um, also take care, let's put it, I don't think, how do you say, as a, some children um, support during that time where, where their mothers and also perhaps their relatives and friends attended the panel and it just worked out fine. And what we, just last week, uh, what we decided is whenever we will have, um, whenever we will have some um, kind of events, official events, which start past 4 p.m. We will offer children um, take care for the time when the event is going on. So thank you for your attention and I'm open for all the questions. Thanks a lot for your really uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, I see that um, we are we have a we have a, um, a question already uh, in the chat. Um, unfortunately, my uh, computer is uh, seems like to be blocked in showing uh, the um, uh, the chat box. But maybe Babis, you can uh, read the question which was um, uh, posed. Yes, of can course. You, can you do that? Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, the question, the point actually mentions, uh, you said that school visits and collaboration with school is the most important in order to attract potential female students to select your business informatics study program as a university major. major. Uh, is it yeah. correct that, such, sustain that uh, such a sustainable collaboration with schools has already been established by your business informatics department? And if yes, maybe you could provide some hints and tips uh, what needs to be considered in order to establish it. We haven't established a kind of a, a regular um, connection to the different schools. What we have is the following. We, in, in our um, um, so faculty of informatics, we have also a professor who is um, um, uh, so whose research area is a detective of informatics and also detective of informatics for secondary schools. And he has a, a kind of a, a huge distribution list of um, computer science teachers in secondary schools. And for promoting the MOOC, we have sent out to all these teachers uh, the information that they might um, use the MOOC in their uh, daily uh, kind of uh, school lessons. Um, what, what we also have is that uh, we have, but, yeah, but we don't have, since we haven't 
I have to put it in another way. Uh, for these workshops we have done over the last years, we also have kind of built up relations to various schools, various secondary schools, and where we, um, uh, at that time when we have done the workshops, where we have sent out the information. Uh, we, we don't have yet a kind of a, a kind of a, a systematic kind of way of approaching uh, approaching the schools to, for example, uh, uh, come and go uh, visit our exhibition and, and so on, since we have no exhibition yet, it will start in, 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 in the fall. And I think this will be, again, this will be a crucial point how we approach the, the, the schools, because on the one hand, there are a lot of programs now uh, out there, and I think um, teachers could go to, to various places. On the other hand, uh, it is in a kind of sometimes it seems in an uncoordinated way that the teachers or that the schools are approached by the different uh, universities and by the different uh, programs. So we really have to think to find, you know, I would say the right way. So the teachers is it not only that this is an, you know, not a, a trip to the TUV and nobody is interested really to go there, but that it really enlarges the, you know, the knowledge and the kind of the, what the, the cognitive experience uh, of the students. Yeah? But as a, we have an, an, a way to approach uh, computer science teachers via our uh, colleague who is kind of teaching um, didactics uh, for um, secondary schools but we haven't started to uh, build up really a systematic, I would say, systematic database and, and a way to approach them to really uh, come to the university. Did I answer the question? Yes, of course, you did. Uh, we, we have two more questions popping up. One uh, is about um, uh, the suggestion you uh, you provided of uh, establishing courses on uh, bioinformatics and digital humanities. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the question is uh, whether you have any evidence um, of um, how uh, this uh, can really impact into attracting more girls. Uh, and yeah, and then there is another. Well, okay, let's let's take this one first. Okay, you know, um, there are a, a lot of um, um, look for the word uh, for the English web. There, there's a lot of experience on a you know not not only in, at our university that um, apparently female students are. It's easier to attract them if you can show them for what they can, this special topic they learn might be used. Yeah? Like, uh, for example, the evidence in our own school is the following. We have five bachelors in this broad area of computer science. This is, we have a bachelor of uh, computer engineering, which is more oriented to hardware and chip development as a computer engineering. Bachelor of Software Engineering, Bachelor of Business Informatics, Bachelor of Medical Informatics, and Bachelor of Media Informatics. Guess what, where they have most female students? In Medical Informatics and in Media Informatics. Most probably because, you know, Medical Informatics, this sounds, wow, it's interesting, I can, perhaps I can work in this whole area of the kind of uh, health ecosystem, which is getting more and more important. Uh, media informatics, this sounds interesting. This has something to do with design. This has to do with, with art, so I can be creative. So this is where apparently female students are easier to be attracted. Yeah? Although when you look then into the programs, at the very end, all are programming their applications, which is 
okay, or they are developing their applications, and all have an interface to the customer and to the client, and it's very important that you communicate with them and so on. But nevertheless, just by the title of the program, female students are more or less, uh, get more or less um, attracted by the, by the, by the topic. Uh, and what has turned out, as I was mentioning, we had Lenore Bloom last year, and it was, it was an international workshop on best practice of the first year with a special kind of gender perspective. And we had a um, um, dean of uh, studies from the Northwestern University, uh, Chicago here, and they have built up um, combined majors, as, as I was saying. And also, uh, sociology and computer science, or architecture and, and computer science. And they could attract uh, more female students for this kind of, for these combined majors than if, than in their programs where they have kind of, I would say, computer science only. Yeah. It's, so it's really, it seems that, uh, female students are more interested if they immediately also see where is the application area. Ah, the application area would be interesting, so I go into the subject. Okay. Yes, did I oh, answer the question? Yeah, it was very clear. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, we have uh, one question more. Actually, another one popped up again, and I would also have one. <laughs> it seems that really triggered a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, reflections and further questions. So, um, one question was about the workshops that you mentioned on gender mainstreaming. Uh, for the faculty members. Yeah. So uh, the, the question was about um, having maybe more details on how they are organized, whether the uh, whether the participation is made compulsory uh, or not, or if it is free, and also uh, if you considered uh, maybe also to um, include um, a, a gender lecture in in the um, computer sciences curriculum, just to just as, as a complementary mean to um, uh, further raise the awareness of uh, uh, researchers uh, and students, as as it seems that support uh, support measures in favor of women do not uh, really um, get a lot of consensus. Yeah. Um, so concerning uh, the, the first question, this um, gender, gender workshops, the nice thing is they are paid by the TUV. So they are really for us as members of the TUV and members of the uh, Faculty of Informatics, they are for free. And they are really, they are trained, you know, yeah, people who <laughs> work in this area and who offer their either half-day or full-day workshops. So concerning how to uh, get the people there, yeah, how get, to get our people, to get our right people there, no, that, I don't, it doesn't, I mean, it's interesting for all of us, but if I go there, it's, uh, yeah, it, they don't have to convince me. I, I have to bring our people who have to be convinced. What we so far have only kind of put as a little pressure is that we say, Every year from each, um, from each uh, research division, we have uh, 22 research divisions, are they called, uh, in our um, Faculty of Informatics. Every year, one uh, member of each research division should, I don't say now has to, but should attend such a workshop. Uh, and to a certain, yeah, I have to say to a certain extent it works out. It perhaps, you know, it's also a question of seniority. If I see that from one group nobody attends, I, I call the head and say, you know, this is very important. And, you know, if you write an EU project uh, proposal, you have to stand, you have, you have, you have to uh, define your gender um, uh, support measures and it makes a lot of sense to go there. So we, we try to we try to convince and normally it also works. But it's not this I have to say it's not something which 
you know, you you offer this to the colleagues and they say, ah, great. I always wanted to go to such a uh, to such a workshop. This is normally not the case. Yeah, you really have to to yeah to a certain extent force them. What we also try to um, establish, and I really say try because it's really at the, at the beginning, that we uh, ask for um, I would say gender competence in our new job postings. I think the job offerings that we all when and there are the hearings that we also ask the people, you know, have you done any work in this area? What have you done in your home place so far? So really this is a kind of a enlarging awareness outside and inside. Yeah? So also kind of our colleagues learn when they hear that such questions are uh, kind of posted um, to the um, um, to the people who are um, who applied for a job. I have a job means assistant professor, associate professor, full professor. Yeah. Um, okay. Did I answer? Yeah. The question. Yes. Yes. Again. Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, I would close. Uh, I would suggest that we um, uh, go with the two last questions. Um, so uh, I had one um, which is uh, really specific and then there is a last one which popped up in the chat uh, which is a broader and more and like an overarching question and that, that can also be a conclusive one. The very specific one from my side um, was the uh, female only tenure track uh, positions that you established and um, I wanted to ask you um, I, I, my understanding was that this this is like a comprehensive uh, measure which has been taken by the entire university right, right. Um, how many how many positions uh, overall overall uh, are allocated how they are divided um, uh, among the different faculties and departments um, and um, yeah um, it was interesting to learn uh, that uh, uh, you faced some uh, resistances but that uh, that you can you could prove that this was part of uh, you know your your constitution yeah sure but my question was is there like a national uh, measure or provision yeah. that um, encompasses this um, it is it is a it is something which was decided by the technical university of yeah. Vienna in particular right exactly it's really it's there's no national endeavor behind it it was, um, and I was coming to, going to the slide, you know, it's really part of the female support program of our rectorate. And I again have to mention our female rector, Sabine Seidler, who is very strict in this area, uh, in, 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 in this direction, that she asked, we are uh, eight schools, uh, eight faculties at, uh, uh, at the TUV. We have architecture, civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, math, um, physics, chemistry, and computer science. That's eight faculties. And she has asked each faculty to provide um, um, in but what is your what is the title of your next? Uh, and I'm look, looking for the English term, uh, a female support program. What is the title of your next uh, webinar in June? Sus sustainability, sustainability of, of gender equality plans. Of equality, exact. She asked for kind of a gender equality plan. Yeah, that is, uh, female support measures for a um, kind of a, a program yeah, uh, from each uh, faculty. And then there was an internal committee. Uh, and out of these eight programs, four were rewarded a, either a full professorship in uh, their respective female professor, professorship in their respective subject or a um, tenure track um, assistant professorship or tenure track uh, position, I should say. 
because it's possible, depending on your evaluation, to go from assistant to associate to full uh, at the very end. Of it, yeah? And the, I said, I think I was mixing up no names. I said, out of the eight, four faculties were rewarded positions, and there were two full professorships and two uh, assistant professorships with tenure track. And uh, it was really this committee who decided which faculty gets which position. And it was for us clear, since we are out of the eight faculties, we are really at the front line of female support measures, yeah, I have to say. And we had, as you have seen in our in the panel announcement, we had just, we were luckily enough to get new female full professors over the last two years. So it was for us clear that politically we won't get a full professorship, but we will most probably get a um, um, assistant professorship with tenure trick. And this is what we got at the very end. So this is really a, a kind of a, a reward for building up our uh, female support measures, for building up our program. And I was going to this, um, to this link most of our um, uh, kind of endeavors we have in German and in English at our website, our, our female support program, which we have kind of handed in to get this position, is only in German, I have to say. But I think even with Google Translate, you could translate it into English. I haven't done it so far. <laughs> but it's not, um, it's not a national endeavor. Uh, but I also have to say that we kind of, uh, we already created some publicity with this uh, female uh, positions. I know from the uh, Alpen Adria University in, um, in Klagenfurt, they have announced an assistant professorship for female scientists with tenure track. They are currently in their evaluation phase. So I can imagine that also other universities will realize that this is to, you know, to really make a difference, to really get the role model. And you need the role model. You need the females in front, you know, of the lecture hall. So that others say, ah, it's possible to do it also as a female. It's, I think, the right way to go. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, it was really interesting also to, to hear that there was a kind of a competition triggered among the yeah. faculties, uh, and, and then this, is, this can be expanded uh, nationwide and uh, motivate other universities to, to take similar uh, measures. Uh, the last question um, was uh, like uh, asking you for um, uh, an assessment of all the measures that you have uh, undertaken to uh, to tell us whether uh, there are any of those measures that you uh, think um, didn't have the expected uh, impact or that maybe um, you know uh, implied too much efforts compared to the achievements and so to if if you would suggest to exclude any particular uh measures uh at this point in time after your mm -hmm. experience okay uh before i come to this as you said these are really concluding remarks yeah i see in my window there's an easy question how do you organize the child care during the event special facilities personal funding again we are lucky just to answer this we are lucky, as I said, we have this kindergarten at TU Wien, and uh, the kindergarten is offered as a kind of, I would say, private public partnership is offered by some kinder, kindergarten institution. They have they, they are they are running they are um, uh, they are having several kindergartens in different places in Vienna. And they kind of joined or with, with Theo Wien and, and offer it also on, on premise of, of, of Theo Wien. And this works, in fact, uh, quite good. It could be better, I say it immediately, because they start at 8 and uh, stop at, I think, 4 p.m. And it would be nice to have the possibility to start at 7 and to end at 7 p.m., perhaps not all the time, but sometimes. But, okay, we are... 
in, the, in this we are going into this direction and as part of the further uh, support they also offer now um, um, kind of a flexible um, support where you can just take for a meeting you can take your child to as you can bring your child to them and fetch it after two hours or three hours and so on and again as part of their program uh, they offer financial support if you um, need some um, some um, child uh, care uh, during an event. So we really get the personal also from this kindergarten institution, as I call them now, and uh, we get also financial support from the um, from the rectorate to do this. Yes, we have to organize it by ourselves but we get the financial and the personal support from them. Okay, uh, and I also have to say, as a, the, the, the least, uh, concerning this last question, the least difficult is here the funding because it's just a couple of hundred euros, two or 300 euros per event. So the event costs, I don't know, 5,000 euros and then this couple of hundred euros, this is not the problem. The problem is really, you have to, you know, you have to get the person, you have to find the room, uh, you have to get, you know, playing facilities and so on. But this work, it works out. It, it, yeah, you only, you have to do it. Ah, what didn't work out from all the other, what was the least, um, uh, the least kind of uh, successful? Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's really difficult to say because from a lot of these measures, you don't see an immediate, you don't, it's immediate success. You don't see an immediate influence. Yeah? Um, but I, I really, I think that all this, mentoring during the bachelor and during the master study um, to a certain extent i think it, 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 at, least, at least there was the least um, kind of positive feedback uh, what we have got yeah? I, I really i put it really on the positive i would say as a, this this uh, e-learning course introduction to programming this um, bridging courses on site, they are really, at, at least for these uh, female pupils, students who think, hmm, it, that might be interesting to look into ICT, but I have no idea what it is. And probably I don't be able to do it because I don't know X and I don't know Y and all the other are better. These are really the best measures you can take, yeah? because there you can give them confidence. Yes, it is interesting. Yes, I can do it. Yes, there are also others who have similar problems like I have. And there's also one thing that, of course, as I said, we should reach out to the schools. Yeah? And then, then always the question, yeah, but we should start already in uh, uh, primary school and we, uh, we should start in kindergarten. But, you know, there's a certain point, I think, where like, universities come to everything. Yeah? And uh, if we really um, uh, reach out, I think we should first start with the secondary school, like what we have now in mind with our uh, with our exhibition, so um, as I was saying, as it is, uh, you know, this one, this program uh, with IBM, uh, I think it's nice for this couple of, of uh, for this couple, how do you say, for this uh, few students who are going there. But we are talking here really about, you know, twenty students per event, and I thought, wow, we will have at least one hundred or even more. And there's sometimes quite, uh, you know, we had a, an EBM distinguished engineer, female distinguished engineer, uh, talking at one of the events. And, but it was great uh, watching and, and, and listening to her. 
but then you almost feel offended when there are only 15 to 20 students uh, listening. Mm. It's also then difficult, yeah? Um, but all in all, I would say the mentoring is the most, I think, is the least rewarding. Uh, let's, let me put it this way, at least from my experience. Hey, thank you very much for sharing also this, um, you know, uh, uh, inputs from the um, less de least effective or uh, rewarding parts of uh, supporting gender equality measures, which is not something that everybody is willing to uh, share sometimes, uh, but it's it's really probably the most useful part. Um, yeah, I, I would just uh, uh, wrap up very briefly to. Um, we don't need to wrap up actually. I, I just think that we will uh, take home your main uh, suggestions um, in terms of continuing uh, the efforts for uh, networking uh, and uh, learning from uh, good practices. Um, which is uh, basically the purpose of uh, our also our webinar series and the synergies that we are trying to establish with uh, other um, uh, you know networks such as Informatics Europe, ACM, but also other Horizon 2020 projects uh, similar to ours. Um, and um, again. Uh, Thanks again. Really, we are really grateful uh, for, your, for your time and for sharing uh, your experience. We mm -hmm. might come back to you um, uh, to ask you um, for including some part of, of um, uh, your good practices into uh, the toolkit that we are working on. Uh, that we will also publish uh, online soon uh, within the Equal IST project. Um, and um, uh, thanks again. Uh, I would also thanks our participants today, uh, also for their for the active engagement, the questions, the patience into continuing uh, longer than we planned. Also. Uh, and and for those of you who have uh, time tomorrow, we will continue on the same topic at um, 1 uh, p.m. Um, uh, so uh, you will find all the details uh, on our website and also we will publish uh, the recordings and um, uh, fr from this webinar uh, uh, on our uh, website too. Thanks again, Gerti, and thanks everybody.